Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Weavelings in the Wild, a one player game that takes about 20 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Weavelings in the Wild, the legendary fate weaver Zadara has decided to put her weavelings on a caloric intake reduction or a diet. And because of this, uh, the weavelings, instead of eating out of house and home, have decided to leave and go into the wilds and attempt to fend for themselves. However, in the wilds, there are dangerous creatures attempting to eat the weavelings, and so Zadara sent you, her fateful trapper, to go and bring back the weavelings safely and secured, or as much as possible at least. In the game, you're going to be playing as a trapper, and you're going to be searching for weavelings in the wilds. You're going to select a space on a 4x3 grid. You're going to reveal the card that you replaced, and place that card into the discard pile, and you'll have that grid as well as a deck. And you're going to be gathering traps, you're going to be defeating monsters, and you're going to retrieve weavelings and bring them back to the Zadara. If you can get 10 or more weavelings, you will win the game. However, if you lose 10 or more, or if you take 10 or more wounds, you're out of the game. It's a pretty simple, straightforward solo game. Let's talk about how to set it up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin the setup for the base game of Weavelings of the Wild, the first thing you'll do is you'll take the Trapper and the Player Aid and set them aside. You'll shuffle the rest of the deck of cards, and then you're going to make a 4x3 grid. Place the cards face down. Afterwards, you will take your Trapper and place it on any of the cards, removing that card from play and putting it into the discard pile, and placing your Trapper in its location. Set aside the Player Aid within reach so that you can see what you have to do on your turn and how the rounds go. Then after that, the trap will be in place and you will flip over all of the cards from the 4x3 grid. Then you're going to begin the game. If you want, you can play with the expansions. One expansion is going to come with additional unique traps that you can set aside and create a, with the deck your own unique trapping system. In the rules, it states how many A, B, and C traps can be in the game, and so you can interchange them as you wish in order to create the simple trapping structure that you would like. Additionally, there's going to be another expansion which, com which comes with unique monsters. If you want, you can take those monsters and replace them with uh, replace the base game monsters with those, as well as those events and replace the base game with those events. And so you have this kind of interchangeable trap expansion, and then you have this uh, interchangeable or non-exclusive, uh, non-mutually exclusive expansion that you can kind of change as opposed to playing with the previous one. And that's pretty much the setup of the game. 4x3 grid, place the trapper down, flip all cards face up. It, it's really simple. To begin play for Weavelings in the Wild, you're going to start with the trapper phase, allowing you to gather traps and play traps as well as move along the board. You'll then uh, lure Weavelings with the meat you've gathered from the trapped monsters. Next, the beasties or monsters will feed on adjacent Weavelings based on that specific card. And finally, the travel phase. All cards in the forest are going to push down and new ones are going to pop up. And you'll rinse and repeat. The first thing you do though, however, when you reveal cards face up is you check to see if there's an event. And if there is one, you will do what it says. And in this one here we have a Blood Moon. It's going to ask you to reveal a Volgar from the deck. And until you do so, you'll discard cards from the top of your deck until you find one. And once you find one, you're going to put it down in, in place of the event. And each event is going to tell you what to do. Most of them are going to be used to get rid of cards from the deck. Sometimes you'll remove that event from the deck after, from the, from the play after you use it. Uh, and other times it'll say if the deck gets exhausted, you'll remove it from play, thus uh, creating less events that slow the, push the game along forward. Then, no more events are on the field, you'll start with the trapper phase. In the trapper phase, you're going to have three actions, and it tells you here on the trapper phase uh, what phase it's going to be in the easy mode, what you need to do, and then on the trapper card itself, it tells you the actions. Action one is move. You'll simply take the trapper, orthogonally uh, um, adjacent, you can go ahead and swap spaces with a card. So up, down, left, or right. Basically, that's how you're gonna move along the grid. You'll move uh, one space, and you'll move the card that you moved to the position back to the place where the trapper was. So one, and two, and three. And that's how you can move along the board. And if you do that, all three actions, that's all I'm gonna do for the trapper phase. Another thing you can do is you can gather traps. When you gather traps, you can collect any adjacent traps that are next to you. Uh, you can choose one of them and just take it. Also, if you want, you can take a trap and you will form a line or create a line along this grid here and collect each trap in, in a line. Uh, now, for instance, here I could take a wild wrecker and then uh, lo and behold, there is a clamp trap right next to it. I could take this one as well. And then there's a rolling log and I could take this too. If there were additional traps going up and going around, you could take all those as one singular action. 
However, if there was a trap uh, right here, so if we have these guys, uh, I can only take these two if this trap was up here. Uh, another thing to note too is if you get a trap line that goes in like a T formation or you, you can't just simply go back. You have to continually make a straight line and gather those traps. But either way, if I get these traps here, I'll take them and I'll put them into my hand. That would count as an action and I would replace them with face down cards uh, from the deck. And that's how you're going to be able to gather unique traps in the game. Uh, and then finally, you can use traps. Each trap is generally going to cost an action. You'll be placing them on top of other cards and interacting with their effects. Most of them are going to involve defeating beasties, gathering those beasties for their meat. So if I want, I can take a clamp trap, uh, clap, <laughs> clamp trap, and place it on a space. And when a beastie moves into it, or if a beastie is currently on it, that beastie will go away. And that beast will go to my hand and count towards my meat value that I can use. Meat value is going to be mainly used to gather weavelings. And whenever you get rid of a card, you're going to collapse the wild and place a new card face down in the top spot. So I've, let's say I've moved, I've gathered traps, and then I went ahead and I, I, I captured a monster with my clamp trap. That is going to end my trapper phase, in which case the next phase will happen, which is luring weavelings. I have a monster with a food, and I also have a weaveling that costs one food. I can play this monster for a food to gather this weaveling, and it'll count toward my captured weavelings that I want to bring back home. I need to get 10 of them. It'll tell you how many it's worth, how much population on the left-hand side, and how much it costs in food on the right-hand side. Whenever I gather something, you'll move the board down, you'll gather a new card from the deck and place it face down up above it. So you're constantly pushing these cards down. If I have no other meat, because I could also gather more weavelings if I had more meat. So for instance, this other weaveling here that costs two meat, if I had another two meat in my hand, I could discard that monster with two meat and take this weaveling, but I don't. So that will end my luring weavelings. Now the beasts will act. The beasts are always gonna act from lowest energy to highest. So for instance, I have a five, eight, and an 11. And I will check where the mouth mouths are. This is a top and bottom mouth. If there's a weaveling in those positions, it will eat them. Uh, if there's no weavelings, it'll stay on the board. When it, gets, when it eats a weavling, it'll go off and those weavelings will be captured. They're gonna be lost follow followers. Uh, and if there's nothing that happens, nothing happens. So we move on to the eight here. He'll check his four positions, nothing. And then finally the Vargler over here has mouth going down. He will eat this Weaveling and this Weaveling will be lost. It's gonna count as a, a lost colony. So now I am at negative two compared to my positive one. It ate this guy, this guy is satiated. It's going to go away and then bam, new cards are going to follow. After all the beasts have eaten, then the travel phase will happen. All the cards on the bottom that are face up are going to be removed. They'll fall down and then they're going to go, bam, into the discard pile. Uh, unless they're monsters, then they're going to go to the side of the board and count as wounds. So if you ever get 10 wounds, you will lose. And in the middle of the card, it tells you how many wounds you get. So let's just say, for instance, this card was there. It's a monster. It's going to go into the travel phase. It'll drop down. It'll count. I'll just put it right next to my lost population. It'll count as zero wounds for now. And then these are going to fall and a new card will be here. After the travel phase is over, you will reveal all cards back face up and rinse and repeat. <laughs> oh, look, we got a blood moon. I'm going to have to get rid of this until I find a Vargler, uh, in which case all the cards will go to the discard pile until I get what I need. Uh, where are you? Oh, no, this is not good. There it is. Uh, and, and then the trapper phase will enact. I can start playing trap cards. I can move around the board. I can gather traps if they still exist on the board. <laughs> this actually gets flipped over. Um, and I can also gather these guys here. These are powerful items that don't cost an action to gather and they will give me unique benefits throughout the game. And of course they replenish just like anything else. And that's basically it. Other than when this deck runs out, when it empties itself, all cards that are uh, either your wounds or your population are going to turn counterclockwise once. So in this case here, it's going to turn counterclockwise. If it breaks the heart of a weaveling, you're going to have to pay one meat to keep it. And if the wound marker goes from zero to any other number, that will increase your wounds. If you ever get past 10 wounds or 10 wounds or more, you lose. Additionally, if you ever run out of traps, you lose. And if your population ever goes past 10 for lost weavelings, you lose. The only way you're gonna win is to keep the weavelings happy and get over 10 of them. And that's 
pretty much the idea of the game. Play these cards to the best of your ability, drop traps down on your turn to capture monsters to use to feed uh, the weavelings to bring them to you, and uh, avoid having monsters turn into wounds by not dealing with them in time for the game Weavelings in the Wild. A pretty straightforward tactical first person game, or first player game, single player game, that's the one. Weavelings in the Wild is a single player game that feels like you're going to lose almost at the start of the game. There's crazy stuff that can happen like events to make you discard your deck. There are monsters that are going to be constantly trying to eat your weavelings and you're constantly trying to gather as many traps and find the best possible locations for your trapper to gather as many of the traps in a line as you possibly can so that you can use them to play against the weavelings or, or play to help the weavelings or to hinder the monsters from eating them. Uh, there's also these random, random wonderful little boon cards that will give you unique abilities that you can play and gather for free. Some of them are going to give you meat. Some of them are going to give you the ability to turn your wounds into food. Uh, they do all kinds of unique little things and they're discussed in the rulebook as to what you can use them for. Uh, the monsters start off pretty simple. They don't do as much damage, but as you discard your deck and have to reshuffle, they start becoming more and more powerful, becoming going from zero to one wound or one to two and so on and so forth. If this deck gets reshuffled more than twice, you're probably at that spot where you're going to lose the game. So you have to be very careful with running through this deck, but the events are gonna push you to do that as well. You have to be very aware at what you're doing and try to make everything count. Most of the time in this game, things are gonna come down to the last couple turns and you're gonna feel the pressure, feel the intensity of the game as you move along. You may or may not be able to succeed based on the difficulty level. And if you want, you can adjust that difficulty level to be making it more easy or more challenging. Uh, and there's even a hard plus mode. We'll start getting rid of additional weavelings from the deck. And if you want to spice things up, you can change the monsters and events up or you can switch up your traps to make them what you'd like with the extra additional Traps expansion. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool, unique single player puzzly game that involves moving your trap around the board and gathering what you need in time before the monsters are going to wound you or eat up all your weavelings. <laughs> weavelings are not the brightest little creatures. They simply just want as much food as they possibly can get, and you are simply trying to bring them back to your master without them being eaten up too much. I guess it's a major inconvenience for her if the monsters get eaten up too much. Uh, the artwork, artwork in the game is great. It's fantastic. It's super cute. I love it. I love the different monster arts. Uh, Everything feels like it's all part of the same little story of these guys going into the wilds and gathering food and then the monsters see them trying to trying to nab pieces of food and they decide to turn them into food. Your trapper is out there looking for them, trying to find different ways to gather them, finding traps on the ground to be able to utilize or making traps. And then you run into little boons that are going to help you along the way while events change the game up. And maybe it's the full moon is going to pop or sunrise. So you're, it's like you're like traversing the day and night cycle as you find these little weavelings. I, I really, really enjoy this game. Now, I'm not a single player gamer, so I mainly had my wife play this game so I could watch how it's played before I jumped in. I played a couple times as well and enjoyed it. Um, it's not typically a game in general I'm going to play because I'm not a huge solo player gamer, but that being said, uh, this game is probably going to hit my tabletop quite more frequently than most of my single player games because it's easy, it's quick, there's a lot of variety in the game, and there's a bunch of change up. It's got a nice little compact box, everything fits in well, and the theme is super cute and works really well. And it's something that I can go ahead and jump on and have some other players check out this game. It's something I can play on the coffee table or set up for somebody else to play and explain this game in under two or three minutes. It's that simple. Uh, the quality of the cards is nice. Uh, the only thing I would say is there's certain little rules errors or some stuff in the book uh, that kind of changes things like kind of mess things up there's like it goes from pages 8 to 9 10 to 15 and then back to 12 or whatever uh, so there's little corrections and errors that are going to be made uh, some things about whether or not you replace the cards with a face down card or whether or not you uh, push the cards down and then place them down is just a little bit unclear and just needs to be specified a little better. Uh, the fact that the cards are all gonna get flipped up at the beginning of every round. So they all stay, they, they're all face up to begin with and then they start going face down and then the end of the round is over. You'll flip the cards back face up. It feels a little weird too sometimes where you'll defeat all the monsters in the bottom row and then you'll, you'll push down and replace and then at the end of the round all the monsters will go down and you'll lose them as points or take wounds or whatever. 
uh, and it just feels like you went out of your way to protect yourself from losing those points, and then all of a sudden there was monsters above it and you just couldn't stop it. So there's just certain things out of your control in the game, which kind of sucks. Uh, but that's pretty much my only negatives. I do really like the variety of different options you can have as to how you want to change your monsters up or your traps up, and there's like a build your own trap assortment uh, stylization to the game, which is nice. This is going to be a solo player so a game for sure. I've played, uh, I think there's like Die in the Dungeons, a great solo player game. It reminds me of those type of things. Uh, I have like the Don't Starve type of a game. Um, there's two more that like really, really remind me of this, the RPG style games. Uh, it's fun. I really, really like this game. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's things in it that I just think need clarifications, but overall, it's solid. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's one of those things I can easily see brought back to the tabletop, and I'm really excited to see what it looks like when it's fully finished. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Weedlings in the Wild, and I think if you like a solo player tactical card game, this is one I really suggest you take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game We. Evelings in the Wild by Atomic Automaton. If you're interested in this game, there's a link below in the description. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button as well. There's a live stream every Wednesday and Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch, where you can see us play games just like this one every week. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the wilds and finding Weavelings with you next time.